Hey, it's Sam with Billado Services. I am an expert in high dynamic range video, everything from shooting through mastering and delivery. And today I wanted to walk through some of the new tools that have been included in DaVinci Resolve 17 specifically for high dynamic range work. Um, so let's jump over to the demo here. Um, I wanted to start with this grayscale clip. I prepped this so that this ramp that you're seeing on the waveform monitor is going to give me a proxy for exposure. So the straightness of this means that every step of dynamic range that's coming in is coming out as one step of dynamic range out. If the line goes up or brighter, it's going to be that part of the image is going to be brighter. If it goes down, it's going to be dimmer. Um, so I wanted to show you this new HDR pane here. This here is awesome. This is the best thing to happen to HDR for grading um, for the average user. What Blackmagic has done here is they've added a, a color space aware set of color wheels. So that means when I adjust this value on the global, it's going to adjust the color on all parts of the image as if it was linear light instead of working within the transfer function like SDR or camera log. So when I adjust the exposure, you can see that the whole image goes up and down very evenly for its overall exposure. But more than that, they have added these different range wheels. So by default, there's six of them. We start at the blacks, move through the darks, the shadows, the lights, the highlights, and the speculars. And what these are doing is they're addressing different brightness ranges measured in exposure values or steps of light. So a doubling or halving of light. And these are all centered on your midtone exposure, um, which is zero. And then these reference a range above or below that. So for instance, these speculars start at positive four. So at four steps above your midtone exposure, four EVs above, this is what you're adjusting with your speculars. So if I start adjusting my exposure up here, you'll see it's just the topmost part of the line that's changing and it's curving in and out of the rest of that line. Okay, same thing with my highlights, that's gonna start at plus 1.5. So that's gonna be a little bit lower and we're seeing that same up and down adjustment showing me a different amount of brightness that's being added or adjusted. Um, down in the lows, you see that what we have here are this dark icon compared to the sun icon. That means that this is adjusting that and things that are lower. So we can start moving that around and you can see how that's adjusting everything that's below that dynamic range. Okay. And if we want to see, this is really cool. If we want to see exactly what ranges they have, they've added a zone graph. And so you can see the different zones here. So for instance, I was on the shadow zone, so it's highlighted, it's showing me here's where it's affecting and everything below, right? And then I've got my blacks and my darks and my lights, which is this and everything above, and then my highlights and my speculars. And at any point, if I want, I can add another zone, right? And tell it whether it's an, a dark or a light zone, say where it starts, so let's say a plus two, and we're going to do it a bright and we're going to call this um, brighter mids. And now that shows up here, okay, as my brighter mids zone. And I can go back to my wheels and address that as a new uh, color corrector, as a new um, color wheel, which is awesome because I can adjust these things independently. The contrast now is on the HDR tab because it is transfer function aware. So you can see that as I'm doing this, the, the line is rotating over here on my waveform monitor. That rotation represents contrast in this context. And that's a really, really, really useful thing. Um, the pivot now you see, you can see is no longer a digital value. This use, the contrast used to work predominantly for SDR exposure and it worked really well. But we're, for HDR, for grading and log, that contrast didn't work because it was built on the data. Now it's color space aware. So I can change my pivot up and down, and that's going to change where that value for contrast is rotating okay, around. And that basically is adjusting my midtones up or down. 
So that's the new HDR exposure features. And if I want to, I can have all of that up all at the same time and really dial in the different zones of exposure within my image. I want to show you what that does in the image. So we're just going to dial up our exposure a little bit, dial down the exposure a little bit. That's looking really good. We're going to dial up the contrast a little bit dial down the contrast a little bit, and you can see how very quickly we can get a very high quality HDR image. Let's go to a different shot. Let's grab this one here because I want to show you another one of the key new features of Resolve Studio 17, and that is the Color Warper tool. Now, there's a lot of different options for this. Here we're on the standard HSP. Um, this also has an HSV, an HSL, an HSV or HSY, which is very similar to what your vector scope is operating in, um, and an HSP log. And these all operate in a slightly different way. You can find which tools work for you, and I don't have time to go into what all of the differences are. And in fact, uh, da Vinci's new manual is massive. So if you want to go and explore that yourself, you can. But here's the cool thing about these is I can grab any point. Let's grab this point, the high saturation for my yellows. We're just going to drag that down. And you can see over here on my vector scope what that's doing to my shades of yellow is it's pulling those all of the saturations down uniformly, okay, up or down. The other thing that I can do is very quickly rotate them so I can move them uh, left or right in my hue degrees and very quickly change that color to be more green or more orange. Now, I could do all of that in my hue versus hue and hue versus saturation curves before. But what's unique about this is I can say I wanted to pin the mid saturation. And then we're just going to grab this upper thing. And so we're going to curve all of the higher saturation colors to be green. And we can see that reflected in the image that every, everywhere that is the highest saturations are now green, where all the other colors in this content have remained yellow. There's a couple of other tools here. We've got a uh, pucker tool, which allows me to pull in the saturations towards a value. I've got a bloat tool that does the opposite. And I'll let you explore all the rest of the options in this because it's, it's quite feature rich. I can change my mesh size to be very detailed, change my number of saturation levels to include a huge amount of finesse that was never really possible with the hue versus hue adjustments. So the last thing that I want to talk about is DaVinci Resolve's new color science. So right now I'm operating in the traditional DaVinci YRGB operating mode. So if I switch this over to YRGB color managed, I can tell it that I want to be working in HDR and I want to tell it what my output color space is. Now, if I set, set this, Resolve is now going to operate a whole lot more like base light. Basically, it's going to take all of this content, move it into an internal log format, DaVinci's new internal log format. You're going to do all your operations in that log, and then it's going to output them into the color space of your choice. This is really useful because it means that you can, without having to use ACES, unify your working space. And you can master the one color gamut and the one color space. Now, for me, I'm very comfortable working in PQ as that gamut and color space. But for if you're more comfortable working in a log format, this is an option for you. Let me set that back real quick. And set me back to 2100. Where'd you go? One of the things that I really love about these new HDR tools is that it's really a replacement for this old HDR mode. That was never really a useful mode. It uh, operated on strange regions of the image, and it was never very clear as to how it was affecting your data or how it was affecting the image. Now these new tools are much more precise. Another thing that's been updated is the color space transform tool, which I use a lot for managing my color management, bringing everything into a unified working space. What they've added here is this new DaVinci tone mapping. And it's going to give me a lot better rendering when I'm moving from log into PQ or into SDR or SDR to PQ or wherever I'm moving my data around than the traditional none or simple luminance mapping. And what they've done is they've gone through and figured out or added some OOTF features, which is adding or removing contrast depending on which direction you're moving.
Now, I personally like to dial those in myself because it allows me to have a lot of control over the overall contrast of the image. And I have some trainings coming out in the near future that are going to go into a lot more detail about how those OOTFs work and about how you can add and manage contrast in high dynamic range. But I'll save those for another day. Um, but for now, this acts as a really, really useful tool. In fact, there's some things that you can do with it that are maybe a little bit unexpected. So for instance, if I say use a custom max input and output and I'm not changing anything, I've actually just created a hard clip at 100 nits and I can change that to 300 nits instead. Going like this. And now, oops, oh, that was 3000. Okay, now all of the data above 300 nits, you can see here on my waveform monitor, has been clipped. And so I can do that to stylize my images and keep them constrained to specific brightness areas. I can do the same thing in the lows with a couple other um, options, but this particular thing doesn't add a low clip. I'd like to see that in the future, but uh, they don't have one for now. Anyway, I'm really excited about the new changes for HDR that have been added to DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. Um, this is really going to get you off the ground working in HDR a lot faster than trying to adapt the tool set to work better for HDR. It's giving you more options than just ASUS and giving you the power of certain tools like, um, like Baselight in this more affordable and generally available platform. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments about DaVinci Resolve 17, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more tips, tricks, and tools for working in HDR. If you have questions about color correcting in HDR, I just wanted to let you know that I have some training and tutorials that are on the horizons that I've been working on for literally months at this point that you, if you subscribe, you'll be the first to know about when these are out for how to grade in HDR, how to think about this content in HDR, how to shoot in HDR. And so you can expect those sometime in the near future. Until next time, I'm Sam Bilodeau with Bilodeau Services, and I'll see you soon.